the big board team of insiders here to win on today's top stories, including Patrick McEnroe right here with us. We'll get to you in just a minute, but we're going to begin with this old mystery back in the news, John Benet Ramsey. As the 20th anniversary of her killing draws near, the Boulder, Colorado police have releasing this video statement about the investigation. The Boulder Police Department is committed to finding justice for John Benet through a methodical and comprehensive investigation while looking at all aspects of the case. We have not and will not give up. Okay, Dan Abrams joins us right now. I can't believe this is still an open case. Dan, uh, will this make any difference? Well, look, any murder case that's unsolved is going to be considered an open murder investigation. But as a practical matter, sadly, I don't think this case is ever going to be, quote, solved. They've investigated every potential angle. The evidence has only gotten weaker over time uh, and only more questions rather than answers. So sadly, I don't think we're going to get answers in this case. Yeah, Dan, and we are hearing now for the first time John Benet's brother Burke, who was nine years old at the time of the murder, speak out to Dr. Phil. And he says, I know people think I did it, that my parents did it. I know that we were suspects. DNA evidence cleared the Ramseys of this crime. But at the time, a lot of people thought the family was involved. Police even considered them suspects. And a lot of people still do think that they were involved. Why? Well, look, first of all, Burke didn't do it, and I'm now convinced that the Ramseys weren't involved either. The main reason that people suspected the Ramseys was the ransom note. There was a note left in the house that had been written on Patsy Ramsey's notepad with a practice note on it before, which was nonsense. It talked about it. We are a small foreign faction. Who says they're small when they want to threaten someone? They claimed they'd kidnapped John Bonet, even though it was clear she was already dead in the house. It, the note was all a fake. It took a ton of time to write that note. And so everyone assumed it was either the Ramseys trying to cover for themselves or the Ramseys trying to cover for Burke. Right. It is. Uh, there's still so many questions out there. And like you said, we may never get the answers. Dan Abrams, thank you for joining us. Now to a parent's worst nightmare. This five-year-old boy flying to New York alone on a JetBlue flight. His mother arriving at the airport to find him missing. JetBlue presenting her with the wrong child. After three terrifying hours, the airline finally locates the boy in Boston. We have legal analyst Ariva Martin joining us. Now, Ariva, I, I can't even, I have put my children on planes by themselves. I can't even imagine this scenario. How did it happen? Many of the facts, Amy, of this case are still under investigation, but as you've said, this is a horrifying experience. Two little boys, five years old, leave the Dominican Republic, headed to different destinations. The boys are mixed up, placed on the wrong flights, and apparently no one at the airlines even noticed it until one boy is delivered to the wrong parent in New York, and that parent brings to the attention of the airlines that it's not her kid. Ariva, here's what JetBlue is saying about it. They say, while the children were always under the care and supervision of JetBlue crew members, we realized this situation was distressing for the families. Uh, the mom's now hired an attorney. Uh, how, how can JetBlue even defend this in court? There's not going to be a defense to this case. They've already admitted that they made a mistake. And in a court of law, that's essentially acknowledging liability, acknowledging that they were negligent with respect to the handling of these two kids. So this is a case about damages at this point. No say how much is they going to pay, Ariva. Thank yeah. you very much. Now to that big buzz from the U.S. Open. It's about that new $150 million roof. It's retractable, designed to keep the rain out, but it's also keeping the noise in. ESPN tennis analyst Patrick McEnroe is here, and let's, let's try to hear the difference yes. in the stadium. Here's the open in 2015, no roof. And now, last night's match. I guess there's a difference there. Yes. You've played in courts all over the world. What difference does it make? It, it, the big buzz is the big hum. It's like this <laughs> yeah. huge humming yeah. noise. And I think, you know, the, first of all, this is amazing. The roof is gorgeous. They played yesterday during the day for three and a half, four hours while play was stopped on the other courts. So the, pl the players who are complaining about it, get over it. You're making a ton of money. <laughs> there's more money than ever before. The fans are getting, someone just asked me here, I'm going to the U.S. Open this weekend, Labor Day weekend. Am I going to be able to see tennis? Of course you're going to be able to see tennis no matter what the weather is because of the roof it's been great the 
ambiance is tremendous for the fans. There's no wind now, too, on that center court. It used to be the windiest center court in all of tennis, so it's a much higher level of play as well. All right, something else people are talking about, this new Nike commercial featuring Serena Williams. During the ad, the words greatest female ever flashes on the screen, and then female vanishes, leaving the simple declaration greatest athlete ever. Very, very powerful ad. What do you think? Do you agree? Well, listen, I, I'm really enjoying coming here to GMA, and I think you guys are starting to like me because you stole this from me, okay? Because <laughs> I was the one. I tweeted this during Wimbledon, our coverage. I said, Serena's the greatest female tennis player of all time. People came after me. What are you talking? Female? How dare you? I said, okay, she's the greatest, she's the greatest tennis player of all time. Then people said, just tennis player? I said, you know what? Okay, she's the greatest athlete so of Nike all time. Just Nike from you, yeah, Nike, 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 yeah, Nike, yeah. Nike. Yeah, show me some love here, Nike, okay? <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, Patrick, thank you so much. Ariva and Dan, thank you as well.